Okay. So back to um, Ethiopia and the GDP. Ethiopia GDP and the whole the guns and the pot smokers thing. Now I want you to try to glimpse like if you can. I don't know how good you can see this on this camera, but this is the okay. This is U.S. Department of State diplomacy in action, right? 2012 investment climate statement Ethiopia, right? 2012 investment climate statement Bureau of Economic and Business Affairs, right? So our economic and business affairs. Now. Right here it says Ethiopia is currently implementing its five-year growth and transformation plan, GTP, right, which was approved by Ethiopian Parliament in November 2010. The GTP emphasizes an annual gross domestic product, GDP, right, growth-based case scenario of 11% and a high case growth scenario of 14.9%, improving the quality of what social services and infrastructure, right? Ensuring macroeconomic stability and enhancing productivity in agriculture and manufacturing are major objectives of the plan. So it's all about that agriculture. It's all about that agriculture. And if they're invested in Ethiopia, right, in Ethiopia's um social social services and infrastructure and nationalistically, you're an Ethiopian or you're a black person of the world, but then, you know, you feel like you're out of the box, like, you don't, you don't want to claim who you are, you don't want to recognize who you are as Israel, or you don't want to recognize who you are as an Ethiopian, then you automatically, um, you really pretty much disinclude yourself from this. You know, you disinclude yourself from this. This is, this is another way, like, if you look at the I's or the I and I and them in America, or really look at the people in America, really, how they were emancipated, right? Emancipated, free from the government into the um, federal government's hand, basically. And they're basically still, they're nationally known as Americans, right? Now, we'll get to that nationality thing. Nationality, because there's verses that should clear that up. You know, this is um, Mary, what, Mary Mary Magdalene Black. This is like the first picture that comes up. Doesn't that look like Oprah? Doesn't that look like Oprah right there? A little bit. I don't know if you can see that that good. But let's go over to something real quick so we can understand something. This right here, the EWF, this says this, the history of the EWF. Now, in the um, in the second paragraph, right, in the second paragraph right there, it says, This organization came into being on August 25, 1937, in New York City, through the efforts of black Americans who sent a delegation consisting of three prominent Harlem figures, all leaders of the black organization known as the United Aid for Ethiopia. Reverend William Lloyd Imes, pastor of the prestigious St. James Presbyterian Church, Philip M. Savory of the Victory Insurance Company and co-owner of the New York Amsterdam News, and Mr. Surreal M. Phillip, Secretary of the United Aid, fell to England in the summer of 1936 to speak with him, Emperor Haile Selassie I, concerning financial matters. Now, this is the, in the third paragraph, this is, where it, 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 this is where it gets important, right? It says, in response to the, well, it's all important. It's all important. You need, you need to have the history and the documentation of it all because we are we already, like, in a position where our rights are basically taken from us but under duress. Now, we could get to the bottom of that if we could present the violation in the United States Constitution according to um, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Because if we just take the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, not just to say that, but then the U.S. itself is under the oath of God because the, the, the country is pledged allegiance to God. And even in its allegiance to Ethiopia makes it just that, you know, especially as an ally to Ethiopia. So when we look at the rights of the people right here, and we look down here and we look in the third par paragraph, it says, in response to Emperor Empowered, the personal physician, Dr. Malaku E. Bain, 
to establish. We're not saying that it wasn't that, you know, some say uh, Marcus Garvey. Some people say Marcus, Marcus Garvey. And it was for, you know, Marcus Garvey was sent in his own way for, but then too, then too, he, he did like a doubt and like he basically, um, he turned on his majesty. And as a matter of fact, it's like a picture that really explains that. And as a matter of fact, you know, let me look at, show you that picture right now before we get into this. Let's go look at that that picture so we can pull that picture. Well, we'll pull it up in a moment, but let's let's get. I really want to say this. Really, I want to put this forth. I really want to get this out. It says basically it says um in response, the emperor empowered his personal physician, Doctor Malaku Iban, to establish the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, right, with the purposes with the purpose set out in the following preamble. We, the black people... Right, until you see that real good. Make sure you can see that. It says, we, the black people of the world, in order to affect unity, solidarity, right, liberty, not just civil rights, right, but the entire, the, the all the liberties, right, all the liberties, right, the liberty of, um, of what is it, life, um, yeah, and I had that. All the liberties, which would be, um, inner life, love, and religion. Excuse the eye. You're the curta, you're the curta. Inner life, love, and religion, right? All the liberties, right? Liberty, freedom, and self-determination to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage, to hereby establish and ordain the Constitution for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Now, basically, just to put it in a simple form, how much sense would it make, right, to go and be taking away what you call pot smokers, gun, or even making it illegal, uh, a product that of ancient times that of the Ethiopian um the Ethiopian constitution is is a major part of agriculture marijuana and then to in this country to be incarcerating incarcerating brothers and sisters behind this you see what I'm saying so it's a big contradiction of their law now if we look at that if we look at um that's just that's just one. Now, why did, I, why did I go to that right there about the black people of the world? Because the reason I went to the black people of the world, because you got black people who say that they're not Israel, right? <laughs> but right here in the Ethiopian World Federation, it says we the black people of the world. So that means that, and what's the first thing after that? In order to affect unity. Unity, because after unity, we have solidarity. We establish solidarity, like building from the foundation. Liberty, freedom, and self-determination, right? So that means that whatever function you're under, even if you say you're not Rastafari, and you say that you may even be an African-American, right? If you really know what's at the bottom of that, right? But really, at the end of the day, when it's said in full, we're talking about this is the Ethiopian, um, all of the Ethiopians. Right, all of the Ethiopians. But it would be better. It would be better to to be constituted, to be nationalized. Right. But let's let's look at something else here. See if we can pull it up. See if maybe it's it's up here somewhere. You know, this. Okay, this is another. This is in um www.lojsociety.org right here, and it says the Ethiopian Hebrew Declaration of Sovereignty. The your Bellevue Jubilee Grace Revision, right? And basically, that's the key word right there: sovereignty. Your sovereignty, sovereignty. You understand? Sovereignty. You know it says the Lion of Judah shall break every chain and give us the victory again and again. And now what we what I what I really want to get to is the um now this right here what Alex Jones says right here on his page right 
by misuse of the civil. Okay, this is this is how basically they get to the people. This is that false doctrine right here. When I was saying, when I was talking about the false doctrine, by misuse of the civil forfeiture doctrine. Oh, hold on, hold on. They playing the jam. <laughs> they playing the jam. Oh, Oh, one second. Hear the current thing. Hear the current thing. Yeah. All right. All right. We don't need no more trouble. We don't need no more trouble. You understand? All right. Now it says by misuse of the civil forfeiture doctrine, right? Constitutional rights can be circumvented. Check this out. Constitutional rights can be circumvented while the owner of the property will have it taken without recourse. Now, this in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, just keep this in mind right here, right? Because we're going to go to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And how that, that very right there documentation is in violation of it. But we're just sitting around letting it go, right? So let's, let's look at the, um, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Let's check that out, right? LOJsociety.org, go to the study page, and there's all these resource materials, and there's also books, books, you know, very important documentation and books on the heritage of Rastafari and the Ethiopian constitution of His Majesty Ketamawi Haile Selassie in the name of Iesus and Yehoshua Hamushia, our black Lord and Savior, right? So, let's dwell into the Universal Declaration of Human Rights so it doesn't be like, one, you know, like the I, I, not just trying to pass time on you, but really just trying to get some, some important info in, if we can, just to get the people, the, all these documentations, this paperwork has to be, um, basically put down. The, I mean, not put down, but basically, um, documented. We gotta have this paperwork with us. You know, you got to take this into the court when you speak it. Like, if we go up here, no country is outside of the Universal Declaration. Um, the Universal Declaration. Um, the Universal Declaration of Rights. No country is outside of that. No country is outside of it. Right? Now here, right here you see Article 9. I know this camera is like shaking a lot. But right here you see Article 9. It says, no one shall be subjected, right? No one should, shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest, detention, or exile. Now, what is arbitrary? What is arbitrary? Well, arbitrary means that one's own own interpretation, one's own interpretation of a law, right? That means that a country making up laws, making up laws that are outside of the original original concept of law in itself in its structure period which is by who god right so that means that if you make up a law that's against marijuana you're basically breaking this article right here no one should be subjected to arbitrary arrest detention or exile you must respect everyone's rights in fact the funny thing is article 10 right after that everyone is entitled in full equality to a fair and public hearing by an independent and impartial so before you even do this false doctrine out of the rest to the people like you're doing right tribunal in the determination of his rights and obligations and any criminal charge against him you know what I'm saying we but we're not seeing this we seeing our brothers and sisters thrown under the jail you know, we send them thrown under the jail, you know, basically um, making them wait in court. Their rights are being taken away. Your rights are being stolen from you. And then you're signing these paperwork under duress. And we can get to that, too, because there's laws that prohibit the government, right, from taking advantage of the unlearned. <laughs> Listen to that, right? Really, and I don't want to say dumb, but... There's some ignorance that causes us to be dumb. Cause remember the lack of knowledge. We, for lack of knowledge, we get rejected. So we must learn. We must try to figure out this. We must learn these things. We must know what they are. We must know what they were, what they are about. You know. But um, 
I just want to brief, did a briefing on this because I don't know how much time I got left. So Shalom and Rastafari, right here. Um, this is the Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene Black. I remember I was looking at that because they're talking about Mary Magdalene now in the um, you know. And this is I look at the first concept that comes to mind is look look like Oprah, right? And then think about Oprah right now, and think about how Oprah could be. She could be different, like, she's the way she is, but then she could be different, right? She could be serious about Ethiopia, serious about her constitution. Just think of all these people, if they realize and woke up, realize who they were, how they could be serious about Ethiopia, you know? And we could make a change, we could come together, we could unite. But I mean, these false, I mean, this false, false doctrine that they used to enslave the people and to basically take away the rights of the people, well, we need to know our rights. We need to know what to do. You know, by him, um, by Rastafari being a representation, the Kedamawi Hala Selassie, we taking it to the courts. We take it to the courts, right? So, Shalom, where did, you know, all beloved of Rastafari in his majesty's name, you know, the king of kings, Kedamawi Hala Selassie, Shalosh, Salah. Iesus, Iesus Christos, Iesus Yehoshua Hamushia, Baruch, Baruch One, I'm signing out, and Amen, Amen.